new SFX power supplies. That is music to my ears. Today we get units all the way from 550 watts to 850. Hold on, 850 watts for an SFX power supply? Why the heck does anyone need an 850 watt SFX power supply? In this review, let's take a look at why you might want such a big power supply with Cooler Master's new Gold Plus SFX power supplies. Because hey, if you wanted 850 watts, today you're getting 850 watts. Hey there and welcome to Machines and More. Today we're taking a look at Cooler Master's brand new line of enthusiast level SFX Gold power supplies. You know, power supplies don't rank very high on the sexiness scale compared to other PC built components. Other than being a great name for my next garage band, power supply doesn't exactly conjure up images of anything special. Custom cables, yeah, those get some looks, but power supply itself, when's the last time you heard nice PSU? Now, power supplies just don't get enough appreciation. I mean, look at the lengths that some case manufacturers go to conceal the PSU in its own little room. It's as if the PSU is a second rate component. And it's anything but, right? If your CPU is the brain of the system, your PSU is like the heart of your build. PSUs are that workhorse machine converting noisy AC power into clean, steady DC power. Now without it, your components might still look nice, but they'll do absolutely nothing. I've got Cooler Master's new 650 watt unit and 850 watt unit on hand for this first look review. And while I can't guarantee you'll turn heads with these in your build, I do think that SFF builders will want to take a good long look at these. These units, especially the 850 watt unit, have been long awaited by the SFF community. And despite the 2020 supply chain disruptions, they have finally arrived. I'll be focusing a little bit more on the 850 watt unit because I do think this is the one that many of you will be interested in for a late 2020 or early 2021 build. With the recent high-powered GPU releases like the RTX 3090 and Radeon 6900 XT, pretty soon it won't be uncommon for SFF systems to draw upwards of 500 watts at load, even when running a relatively efficient chip like the Zen 3 5600X. Now, while that means that a popular unit like Corsair's SF600 will work, it will be running at close to 80% of its capacity, resulting in lower efficiency, higher operating noise, and can cause more wear on the capacitors. If you're overclocking a higher end Intel 10th gen chip, that's not even going to be a remote possibility. At 250 watt PL2 levels and an RTX 3080, you're looking at more than 600 watts of total system power draw at load, and even then a Corsair SF750 will be running its fans at a pretty good clip. An 850 watt unit means that you can stay at sub 80% levels, in fact, a lot closer to 70%. Cooler Master's new line of SFX PSUs come in 550, 650, 750, and 850 watt capacities, meaning that at least at the time of this review, this guy here is the largest capacity SFX power supply in production. Now, comparable products in this higher end segment of PSUs include Corsair's SF line from 450 watts to 750 watts and EVGA's GM line from 450 watts to 650 watts. Cooler Master's new units are all 80 plus gold rated for efficiency, meaning that the PSUs are at least 87% efficient and more efficient when loaded to the middle of each unit's rated capacity. Therefore, at most 13% of power is lost between the wall and your internal components. From a price to performance perspective, I don't recommend anything less than a gold and anything more than a gold. Going to a platinum incurs a heavy 30% or so cost penalty for what amounts to a meager 2-3% to gain in efficiency. For an extreme comparison, if your system draws 500 watts constantly and you're using it at that level for 8 hours a day, every day of the year, at a relatively high utility power rate of 25 cents a kilowatt hour, you're still only looking at a savings of seven to $11 a year. These power supplies come in a relatively attractive appearance. There's a thick, durable layer of textured paint along with a cosmetic indentation on the side showing Cooler Master's logo and the model identification. The front grille is less reminiscent of a gel cell, quite nice looking actually with a CM logo emblazoned in the center and underneath that is a so far so quiet fluid dynamic 92 millimeter fan, uh, which won't spin up until about 15% of total rated capacity. And that means from a wattage perspective, the SF 
600 and the EVGA GM650 will spin up a lot later than the, the 650 watt unit here. But then again, this fan wasn't really noticeable from a noise perspective at those lower levels. At the top, a honeycomb grill allows for ventilation out the top and a small rocker switch controls the on off for the unit. On the inside, the units feature 100% Japanese branded capacitors, meaning on both the primary AC side and also the secondary DC side, you are getting the highest performing components. These capacitors are rated at the higher level of 105 degrees centigrade, which translates to higher durability and reliability. Now here's the most impressive part. Cooler Master warrants these units for 10 years, which is longer than the seven years on both Corsairs and EVGA's units. Considering you will move the PSU from build to build to build over the course of that time, a longer warranty is also a plus and also indicative that the company is willing to stand by its product. Now, these are all fully modular so your cables can be taken off or installed as needed. And this is really convenient when building because you can make your cable runs backwards from the motherboard, a generally good way to do it for SFF since it's easier to plug in cables here on the PSU side when your space is tight. The 10 pin and 18 pin connectors are split up into two levels and you get four PCIe or CPU connectors, uh, similar to the SF750. And this, even the 650 watt unit does give one extra than the SF600. While I don't think most builders will be using this for HEDT builds, Cooler Master does give you two EPS connectors. And that's uh, in case you are running a Threadripper or X299 platform, and you're using an SFX power supply. The cables included are similar to the ones on the SF600, and they look fairly basic, but they are relatively subtle and blend in quite nicely. And they are flexible enough to work in your build. These are properly sized as 16 AWG, and I don't have any concerns about the functional quality of these. They do look a lot nicer than some of the mesh sleeve cables from some other manufacturers too. I did also appreciate the way the 24 pin ATX cable was split up since it makes the cable runs a lot easier when that width is greatly reduced. It's difficult to get an appreciation of just how small SFX power supplies are until you stack them up next to a full ATX unit like this white V650 V2 here, which is a great looking unit that I'm also reviewing. Um, your typical ATX unit is almost two liters in volume. So an SFX unit is about 0.8 liters. So if you're building in an SFF case and you have a choice between this or this, well, I mean, I would recommend this any day of the week. Not only do you save space, your cable runs are more flexible and you minimize interference with all your other components. All in all, this is a solid unit. I've been testing the 650 watt unit for a month now, overclocking a 10A50K with no issues. And while the fan, it definitely kicks on earlier at 100 watts or so of draw, a lot sooner than the SF600. It is a very quiet fan, while the SF600's fan was a little bit louder. You'll also see this 850 watt unit in the Cooler Master NR200P build that uh, I did for the Ryzen 5000 test system on this channel the 850 watt is proving to be a very good performer. Now I know some folks coming over from ATX builds get a bit of sticker shock when they see SFX units. And the reality is it's not easy to pack all these high-end components into a small package. Yes, they do cost more than your basic ATX unit, but at the same time you are getting a high-end enthusiast grade, modular cabled gold plus product. Now, speaking of pricing, the MSRP is very fair relative to the competition. And while pricing on PC components do change all the time, as a reference, at the time of the release, an SF600 or GM 650 watt unit typically goes for about $120 US. MSRP on these Cooler Master units start at 110 US dollars or 120 euro for the 550 watt unit. And they go up in price by $10 US or 10 euro for every 100 watts of incremental capacity making the 650 watt price to compete at $120 US or 130 euro. The 850 watt unit tops out at $140 US and 150 euros, which is a highly attractive price point for something that is more powerful than the SF750, which is currently going for $185 or so, if you can even find one in stock. Of course, unlike the SF750, this is a gold plus unit and you don't get braided cables. But for the price difference, you are fairly close to a sleeved cable set in whatever color you want. So why limit yourself to black, right? 
Now high on my personal wish list is a white version of this power supply. And if Cooler Master is able to make a white version of this, just like the V650 white edition, then I think SFF enthusiasts would snap that up. And especially if there is a version with white cabling just like this, or even braided cabling, that would be a huge, huge seller. Why the heck would you even consider an 850 watt unit? Now you could make the argument to go for the 850 watt unit from a noise or efficiency perspective, right? Because if you load this at around 50%, it's gonna be at the peak of the efficiency curve. And those are all valid reasons, but I'll add that for just $20 more than the 650 watt unit, you can essentially future-proof your power needs. This may just be the part with the longest product life cycle in your build. How many watts is the whatever tracing 6090 or 9900 XT going to draw? I have no clue, but the good news is with a 10 year warranty and 850 watts, you probably don't have to know either. Cooler Master's entry into this segment affords builders with yet another much appreciated and frankly, much needed option. SFX power supplies are a tiny fraction of the units sold in the market and they are still a relatively niche product. And this year has been rough for some folks trying to find an SFX unit. If 2020 has taught us anything about the global supply chain, especially for SFX power supplies, having only one high powered high end option in the Corsair SF750 is not a good thing for consumers or for product availability. And I really do hope that these Cooler Master units will be readily available to work their way into your builds. I hope you enjoyed this review. Please subscribe to stay connected and help the channel grow. And if you are picking up one of these, I will be leaving links down below. So please consider using them to help support the channel. I will see all of you again soon.